I, I think everyone in the room knows uh, the man in the middle, Mark, Mark Steinmeier. Mark's uh, one of the pioneers of the hotel business here in Indonesia, um, working with a core and really growing a core uh, at the very beginning. Um, on your far right is Arastus. Arastus has art hotels. His family dabbled in hotels, and he and his sister are taking it seriously. And they formed art hotels and now have uh, enough hotels to buy us drinks after this session. Uh, it's definitely over uh, a dozen, 13 or so, and about the same number uh, in the pipeline. To your left on the stage is probably someone that not many of you know, um, uh, Andrew Corkery. Uh, he is the executive chairman of some title like that, of the uh, CELO Sorry. Group. Whoa. That'll do it. That'll do. Yeah. That'll work. And uh, Andrew a has uh, a, a deep yeah. background in our business. Andrew, uh, what hotel school did you well, go to? First time I do a conference with the beer. Andrew, what hotel school did you go to? I didn't, Eric. You're, uh, what, my, you're my educator. What hotel company did you work for? I didn't, Eric. You're okay. Uh, you must be from a property company then? No, Eric, I'm not. Okay. Well, Andrew's group. He worked, his history is with uh, Royal uh, Bank of Scotland, right? Correct. And uh, from the pubs where he learned to drink beer. And Andrew has a development in Lumbach. Lumbach is not all Mondelika. Uh, they have a project called Salong Silo and a couple others that we'll hear about. Mm -hmm. It Where's is, in uh, my opinion, the most successful yeah. resort residential okay. project uh, in Lumbach. Uh, it's doing extremely well. Sales. Uh, the homes are in the 40s, I think. They have some land sales, land lot sales as well. They have 25 open. They're operating it uh, open for transient guests, and I think it'll have some very interesting perspectives coming from the uh, from the banking side. This is the hot seat, um, and it's usually Manov's uh, fun to put everyone on the hot seat. And because they're subjecting themselves to your questions, perhaps mine, they get to start happy hour a little bit early. And you see, Arastus has that really arty drink. Um, that arty drink is yours. Uh, Andrew wasted no time claiming a beer. What did you get, Mark? Beer, beer. You got beer. Okay. I thought we got you. I thought we ordered you pastis. Can we order one more uh, after the pastis? Yeah, okay. Can I order maybe one b more beer for you? Minus you, you don't like that. We can system. get you a beer. Yours is not working. Gonna <laughs> You're going to get a beer. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <coughs> Robert Harp. Robert Harp was asking a lot of the questions through the app. He's left. So we need some of you to take up the slack and ask some questions via the app because I haven't prepared any questions. Okay. So it's going to be a a very short session if you don't ask some questions. We want to uh, address what you want to know, That's so right. please uh, take the time to uh, ask questions via the app, or you can do it the old-fashioned way and just shout it out. <laughs> I'd like to start. The, the guys have been in the news, a couple of them. Uh, Ross Deuce's group uh, and Mark's group have recently uh, announced or the news has come out that they've collaborated um, with other groups in some type of partnership and uh, I'd like to investigate and find out the whys and the benefits of these collaborations um, and to see if it was something that was a long-term part of a long-term strategic plan or whether it was something that was just spontaneous and, and happened so um, Mark, do you want to uh, go first and address that? To uh, why do we change the, we move to the next move and the why partnership? You, that's right, correct. So uh, briefly, I think when we, and not only myself, but when we decide to establish uh, my own management company in, uh, in 2001, 2002, I think it was the perfect timing as my colleague from Archipelago and others, it was timing to set up the company. I think times, uh, is moving uh, much faster today, and I think now it's time for more consolidation. Uh, uh, 10, 15 years ago, it was really to be focused on local, 
And today, I think we have to think much more global uh, for a few reasons. One, uh, if you want really to exist in this market, if you are just in Indonesia, it's not enough. You have to conquer the Southeast Asia. That's number one. Number two, in terms of technology, IT, distribution, you can't just alone do something in Indonesia. You, have, you need to have much more means, okay? In terms of uh, power on negotiation with the different parties involved in the booking, uh, OTAs and others, you need to have much more means to grab the market. So you need to have, I think it's time today for consolidation, alliance, partnerships, to get much more means to fight because the market is totally in, uh, in disruptive, not only for the hospitality, I guess it will be disruptive also for the OTA uh, through different channels. So it's really time to change the strategy to be stronger by, you have the big player, which they have the means to do it, and there is the, the middle-sized player, which I consider myself as a middle-sized. So um, it's time for the middle-sized player to join together to be much more powerful in the market. And was it a planned strategy? Had you thought yes, about yes, this? Yes, clearly. Uh, clear for me. Uh, already I was looking at this five years ago. Yeah. I was trying to look for the right partner. Um, I cannot tell you what I didn't want it, but I, didn't, I want to have a partner which is really, there's a complementary where I can bring something in a plate, okay, and uh, uh, a partner which is willing, willing to, someone who believes on the branding, because Tosia Spirit, Tosia Philosophy is brand, and I want a partner with the mean to expand outside the region. Good. And at the end, we, we choose, and they choose, I mean, it's, a, it's like getting married, uh, the group Capital Land, which they are more focused on the service residents, they want to penetrate the hotel business, while this morning we hear that the hotel business want to penetrate the service residents, uh, Capital Land is quite strong base, it covers 34 countries in, in the world. Uh, around maybe today we have all together maybe under 10,000 rooms. Okay? And uh, it's a long-term strategic partner, which is really willing to, to expand the hotel brand in the region. And uh, Rastu, perhaps uh, 20 seconds on what you're doing with Rooms Inc. Uh, because I don't know if everyone's that aware of that collaboration. And again, the same question, was it a pre-planned thing? Was it spontaneous? Um, what are the whys and, and the benefits of it? Uh, well, before Room Sing, uh, in January, we have a uh, private equity came into the company uh, to reorganize and restructure it because we were started as a uh, family uh, business organization and then we convert into a corporation when the private equity came in. And then uh, when we, uh, regarding RoomSync, so basically RoomSync is a hotel brand that owned by Sinarmas in Samarang. Uh, the first one is in Samarang. And uh, they built it, uh, it's been running for one year. And then um, just out of spontaneously, uh, I was having lunch with uh, the, the, the owner and then you know, we were just talking and then one thing led to another. Was there any wine involved at lunch? Uh, yeah, it was a uh, whiskey, so. Whiskey, okay. <laughs> so, and then, yeah, because of that lunch, basically, we were a bit buzzed, and then we're like, hey, you know, we have a hotel, but Sinarmas, as a big, big, big corporation in Indonesia, focusing on property develop development, they also, you know, not really focus in hotel management. So that's why they're like, you know, why don't you run the hotel management operation side? And then, you know, they just keep building, and that's what they do. And that's where the joint venture started. So we uh, co-owned the, uh, the brand of RoomSync. And then, yeah, we shared the joy and sorrow for to grow RoomSync together, basically. So your recommendation to owners is to make sure that they do have uh, drinking lunches with potential partners. <laughs> if, if, if you cannot fight them, just let them join you. Yeah. Uh, either one of you, uh, if you want to answer this, have your jobs changed because of that, or do you expect them to change in the future? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Me? Yeah. Um, just doing owner management, you know? All this owner need to be handled. Day-to-day, uh, -day, basically, I'm going forward, and then my COO is the one that holding the fort, basically. Mark, any change in what you uh, do? Uh, my job changed, changed a lot, uh, because we, we, first I will say is to transfer the know-how of the hotel into the group of Capital uh, Land and to develop this uh, hotel division. Uh, two is because Tosia has been very really brand focused, uh, lifestyle and all this, so 
we have a big mission to, to transfer this know-how and this mindset to all the different countries where uh, Capitol is based, in China or this. So I spent a lot of time traveling to, to pass the, 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 the knowledge, the, the brand concept to all the developers in the region in order that they, they get the same mindset and we have it in order to expand the network. So the number one is to, to really uh, brainwash all the business development. We get around 60 developers in the region to really get the feel of the brands and how to sell it, how to convince owner of the brand. That is totally changed the, the, the job. The beer is uh, going to the uh, man on, on the right side of the stage. Does anyone in the audience want a beer? Oh, you guys got to wait. Or, or you can come join us on stage and you can get a beer. Anyone want to join us on stage Jeez. for a beer? It's not every day. Norbert, get on, take that chair. Conference, huh? Can we have one more beer, please? Satu Lagia. Thank you, Norbert. Actually, do you qualify as an owner? Actually, you do, right? You have the property in Bogor. Okay. All right. Um, you want a beer? Eric knows I do a lot for beer. You know my Any, Anyone else? Anyone else? It'll be about even if we get one more person on stage. Um, you guys were asking, uh, where's my drink? It's in the bar. You do want us to finish on time. If I have a drink, I'll go on and on. Um, uh, we're picking on the private equity guys before. Um, I guess you thought that they were pretty negative today. Um, I was a partner with Ian uh, for a long time, the guy in the middle, known him even longer. Uh, that was an optimistic Ian, okay? Um, but I guess what you're asking is, is there, uh, is there some sunshine coming? Because I guess the message that everyone got was that um, debt costs a lot, yields are low, and you didn't get a warm and fuzzy feeling from what you heard. So uh, does anyone on the stage want to sound optimistic about hotel ownership? Well, you know, um, we used to be a, a family developer company, so we owned the assets, and then we let international management to run it as an operator. So I guess uh, as a family owners, which I think most of Indonesians, uh, hotel owners are family-based still, and um, the, the game is always the asset value uh, compared to a uh, yield or uh, IRR. Uh, I guess, you know, in, in overseas, I'm pretty sure that you know, as an institution, you will see it as an uh, IRR or yield base. But most of our Indonesian owners that I know of, of course, they are focusing on having a land that they have for generations and uh, rather not doing anything, they want to build something that they can be proud of, that they can, you know, like what Ian said, like building their own living room to the world. You know? So I guess that's the mentality for local asset owners uh, whose family background. But I guess uh, if you ask me prospectively, it depends where you are coming from. If you are an asset owner or you are a brand owner. Let's look at the asset. I mean, is there good news for hotel owners? Yeah, as an asset, you know, of course, you, you want to make money out of your asset. And then rather than being a sitting duck doing nothing, uh, you build something yeah. out of it. Nor Norbert's waving his finger. And before he starts, you guys know Norbert's with uh, Archipelago Hotels. You've heard they have 140 hotels or something like that. The Cuban properties, which, who won that prize of seven, seven nights in Cuba? If you want to trade uh, for two nights in PIK in Jakarta, let me know. Um, but Norbert does have a property in Bogor. Um, I don't know what you're going to say, but are you making money from the Bogor property? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm with him here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you just waving your hand because you want your beer? Private equity has a complete different game, right? They, they buy cheap and sell expensive, and that's it. And they do that on the debt. Uh, but if you're into uh, 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 creating income for a family, then it's, it's a very profitable business here. Uh, payroll is low, utility cost is low, hotels are hugely profitable. We are running QPs in this country that, that other countries can only dream of. So, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of opportunities here. Yeah, you built your hotel in, in Bogor. I, I built a hotel five years ago. I'm running a 57% QP. I had, had an ROI in four years and three months, and I'm really happy yeah, and doing now a third one. So I asked no you the same still. thing. Uh, Mark, you yes, were uh, involved in I think for me the evolution, uh, I, I like, like uh, Rastus mentioned, it's, it's true, Indonesia is the beauty of it. There's most of the owner, not all of them, is really assets, is family. But I think change, change a lot because 
Sometimes just to focus on assets, it can be painful financially. Uh, Indonesia, the loan, the this, the that, the cost, and all this. Some can still afford it, some cannot afford anymore. Okay, and I think uh, on the next five years, there, I guess for me there will be some cleaning. Some owner will really don't put a finger into the hotel industry anymore because it costs a lot of money. Okay, and uh, so if we evolve, so I think the Indonesian mentality still remain a bit asset for sure, and is the beauty of it. Is the reason why someone mentioned this morning that it's a country where you can find a very nice hotel, and some other country is not as good. But those owners will become more and more financially oriented. They will see this asset, but there will be more and more concern on return investment and all this. So I think things will change, okay? And they will be much more cautious, okay? How to develop, uh, they will get more maturity in how to develop hotel. Which on one side, the good points, there will be maybe less hotel, more profitable than the quantity where everybody makes his hotel, but many of them has a really big trouble. So all these guys own hotels. It sounded kind of positive to me. Uh, perhaps the one of the differences is they're actually developing hotels for the most part. There was also some talk about debt and uh, versus yield on uh, acquiring hotels. Andrew, I know we were talking earlier, um, and I don't know how you simplify that this, but Andrew's had some recent conversations about. Um, acquiring debt offshore or, or swapping debt. Um, do you think you can boil that down yeah, in sure. a simple so way and, and share some of that? The investment banks up in uh, Singapore will do what's called a cross currency swap. So if you've got debt, uh, Indonesia debt, uh, and revenues in dollars, um, they'll put a package together and, and swap that out and bring the, your financing costs down by about 3 to 4%. Um, Complicated structure, but uh, you, you need to have those revenues, your dollar revenues. Uh, otherwise, you can get yourself in a bit of trouble otherwise. Okay. There's an extra beer. Does anyone else want to join the guys? What question do we have? Ah, what's the most frustrating thing about opening a hotel, uh, owning hotels? Most frustrating and the most rewarding. I'll answer the last part of that for Arastus. I think it's the parties. No, guys, anyone want to tackle that? What's the most frustrating thing and the most rewarding thing about owning hotels? Arastus. All right. Uh, the most frustrating is that basically if you do a financing, uh, with a bank financing, we end up working for the bank. Basically, every profit that you make is just going to have to go to serve the loan to the bank. And then the minute you're having a bigger profit, and then the, you know, the smaller profit is for the interest, the big profit is for the loan. So yeah, that one is kind of drainage uh, at the end of the day because you end up working for nothing, uh, except your value of the asset goes up, of course. But you cannot buy food with asset with asset value at the end of the day. So that's a problem. But again, if the motivation, like myself, I built hotel not because I wanna have the hotel and have in many hotels, but actually I was building a brand. So that's my perspective that actually the first uh, two to three hotels that I built myself was actually just a infrastructure to set up the brand to the future. Yeah, let's ask Andrew what the most rewarding thing is about what he's doing. And for those of you who don't know his project, it really has started as a residential project that they also rent to transient guests. There are hotels on the plans, and you're looking at some other things as well. But now you have an operation going. You have a cool restaurant with great view, and you're renting out these rooms. So it's a transient lodging facility. What's the most rewarding thing about that? I think a it's place for your partner to get married or uh, something like again, that? I think it's probably seeing the, the owners come there with their children and then playing on the beach. Um, you know, we've got, obviously, kids' facilities and stuff there, and it's, it's that... Yeah, it's taken us. You know, 2009 was when we bought the bought the land there, so it's taken us a long time. But during that journey, we've obviously learned a lot, uh, and have a lot of um, owners come along with that journey. Uh, and then seeing the facilities built and finished, and then them enjoying it is quite a rewarding thing. This next question here: Are guys currently assets heavy or assets light? That's implying, that's kind of an operator question. So we're gonna take that off because we're talking to these guys as owners. 
So the last question, besides flat rates in Jakarta hotels, residential sales are very slow with no yield growth and difficult to rent hold or sell. I think someone's looking for some advice on what to do with an apartment in Jakarta. We'll kind of skip that, but Andrew, I'm going to go back to you. And, you know, you're in Lombok, and just over a year ago, uh, uh, there was a, a horrible uh, earthquake that has impacted uh, the lives of everyone in Lombok and the business in Lombok. Uh, you've been selling real estate. What's happened in the time since the, uh, since the event about a year ago? So operationally, we were, I think, 80% uh, for that month, and that went down to zero overnight. Um, but from the real estate sales, it, it really didn't have much impact to us uh, at all. People who sort of understand Indonesia realise that there's always, you know, earthquake risk, volcanic risk here. Um, but fast forward to where we are today, um, I just saw the net arrivals, foreign arrivals, and they're, they're only down 13% year on year, which is quite encouraging. And, and the biggest sort of factor to that is the Air Asia um, and what the government's done. Um, yeah, there's four flights a week coming in from Perth, a higher value tourists coming in um, there, and that has supported the, the numbers uh, overall. I know, Eric, your um, hotel you're involved in there is, hasn't performed uh, as well this year, um, but for us operationally, it hasn't really... Um, had that much of an impact, and 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 that's a factor of two things. We're not, you know, we're still in pre-opening mode, um, and uh, you know, a lot of the guests are coming through are, are you know owners and stuff like that as well. You know, I know you're playing with some niche brands, some niche product, as is Rastus, and I think we'll target this towards Rastus uh, because the two of you are both working in that area. You're working in, in, in niche, you're with art, and you're talking about some things, I don't know if I can say what, but we'll give you an opportunity later to mention it or not. Are, are you working within that niche as a way to outperform the big guys because the big guys have all the distribution machines? Are you looking for some way to gain a premium or is it just what the little guys can do better than the big guys and you see that as an opportunity, uh, Rastus? Well, um, for all this time, uh, I've always think from a hotel perspective, how do you compete with you know, the big guys? How do you compete with the smaller guys? At the end of the day, uh, I come to a conclusion that it doesn't really matter anymore to me because I am in the mission of trying to unhotelize our hotel. I don't, want, I don't want to be a hotelier anymore. I would like to be a, a platform company where you know, we're a blank canvas. I think Agung stole my words. I, I told him about blank canvas earlier today. But yeah, so we want to be a blank canvas where people can collaborate with us. So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day uh, as a hotel or as an F&B or as a content, uh, what do you call it, content producer or merchandise whatsoever. At the end of the day, as a brand, we need to be able to be relevant and we need to be able to engage with our consumers, whether it's from an angle of a hotel or F&B or any kind of a, uh, business services that you offer to them, but you know, I don't believe that uh, I should be thinking as a hotelier anymore. So the way I see it, I'm building a content in my company right now. I'm just focusing content. That's all. Voila. So millennial. I went, I did it, build a hotel chain next, but it's on the same flavor. No, so basically right now we have a, uh, we call it Art Hotel Play. So this is like a content producers. So we're gonna doing a, we've done music festival, we've done food festival, we're gonna do a marathon festival, we're gonna do uh, merchandise, we're doing a YouTube series, we're doing movie, we're doing so many things. So basically all these things is just a, a content, right? To produce, mm. to support all our ecosystem, which is hotel, FNB. So at the end of the day, hotel is just hotel. As long as you have a strong yeah. content, then you yeah, can yeah. relate. I, I totally agree with uh, Rastus. I mean, there's no more this issue, small one, big one, global players. Yeah. Uh, today, number one, if you can provide a really, really unique guest experience with real content, in fact, the world has changed. And you can see all the big players are looking to buy all these small entrepreneurs who create the things. So, in fact, the big player, more you are big, it's difficult to create something tailor-made. So it's much easier for them to buy an existing one. So 
today the, it's changed totally. And all this guest-oriented product, brand, lifestyle, in fact, as a big group, it's difficult to create it. Okay, so one need the other one. So there's no more this kind of rival situation, the small player, the big player. Everybody is focused how to get the best idea, the best content, the best guest experience we can provide it. Then we make the difference with the others. Yep. It's not a more a chain hotel, like we mentioned before, standardized, out of it. Okay? So how to be creative, consistent, and use the right content. Yep. Maybe I'll just share yep. a bit, Eric, if you don't mind. So basically yesterday, actually literally just yesterday, um, there's a marathon event coming up in Jakarta. And I'm like, I don't have a hotel in Santul or Bogor or you know that area. So how do I able to tap this community uh, without having to have a hotel? So basically through, let's say for merchandise division, I create a sportwear and then a sportwear shirt and then I collaborate with the marathon organizer. Then all of a sudden you have a brand right there. You're Connected tapping. at all with art hotels or totally independent? Any mention of independent. art hotels? Totally independent. Yep. Entrepreneur on the wild. Maybe it sounds yeah, like there's a story here. The, the, you you the might want to think about a follow-up question really for that. To be in the brand activation. Suda, okay. Do you want to talk about the niche that you're playing with? Yeah, so our brand is, and, and the client base that we've got is formed, has been formed around um, being able to relate to them per, and on a personal basis. Um, and that means you know, we've taken friends and family down there to, to Lombok to surf, to, to get away from um, you know, the busyness of, of Bali. And, and our, our client base is something um, that enjoyed Bali 20, 30 years ago, um, now have money and want to have you know, a lovely villa in a lovely place, but don't want to get involved in all the traffic snarls. So that's what sort of summarises our, uh, our guests, our, our customer. And, um, and it's then that comes back to the guest experience that everyone's talking about. Um, and, um, and that's what we're trying to do with this, 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 this niche brand that we've, we've got and, and looking for other acquisitions which match that. Um, uh, 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 I, was lo I was looking for something where you might be getting in the water. You're, you're not going to go there? We won't go there. You're it's, not going to go there. Okay. hopefully going to be signed in the next week or so. But, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, but again, it fills in, it fits in with our, our, um, you know, our motto is luxury less travel. So going to remote places, providing a luxury experience, um, and having uh, a story to tell, and the story to tell, you know, that we've, we've built this place over X period of time, but it, it comes back um, to what everyone said today, is that um, the, the founders of, of particular hotels uh, and this luxury niche experience have a story to tell, and, and the, your guest will relate to that, to your story. Um, and it's a very important thing that we've found out and, and believe in, and, and certainly any acquisition that we make has to have... Um, those criteria, but uh, the, the founder of, of that particular business has to have a, uh, that we're acquiring, has to have a story to tell as well. And that's why he's got a client base which uh, returns uh, to, to those particular hotels. And, and again, the, we can relate to, which is a lifestyle surfy brand. Good. Um, Norbert, I, I know you're up there just because you wanted the beer, but I'm, ac I'm gonna ask you a question. You have to earn your beer. And the question is, how is your beer? Is your beer good? It's very good, yeah. No, I do have a question. It, I know you're, you have a marketing background. The question was what geographies, I guess what nationalities or within Indonesia, what regions, I guess, do you see growing aggressively from a, a demand standpoint in the tourism business for us in Indonesia? Are you meaning in the, in the tourism landscape or real estate in the, general? The tourism, the tourism. Uh, well, in, in, in Indonesia, and I'm very Indonesia-centric, uh, that's kind of putting them on the hot seat, isn't it? No. <laughs> the, basically, it is the same story since the last four, five, six years. Growing middle class, profileration of budget airlines. So basically, in every city where you have a city link and a, and a Garuda and a, uh, Asia connections, you can set up mid-market hotels very easily. Uh, demand is huge, and it's growing very rapidly. So I see a lot of opportunity in secondary and tertiary cities as well in the Chabu Betabek area. I would be a little bit careful now with the development of big mice hotels in Central and Boga because of the government moving. 
and that will uh, have a major impact in five, six, seven years on the rice business for these hotels. So that would be the only area we have to be careful right now in Indonesia. Let's look internationally. What, what, what nationality um, is going to be the most important in the next 10 years to the tourism industry here in Indonesia? Uh, China. China. And number two? Uh, Indonesia itself. Okay. Okay. Question is, uh, what's with the Russians? Um, Andrew, I think they think you're Russian. Uh, he, he's from Australia. They're pretty close. They both drink a lot. He prefers beer. Russians prefer vodka. Next question. Uh, what, is, what, in your opinion, is the hotel the future that you want to develop? Hotels on the moon. Um, does anyone want to answer okay. what kind of hotel you want to do in the future? What is the hotel of the future? Anyone want to tackle that? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, bon, the, the, I try to stop my creativity in creating brands, but uh, I wish to create another one. But I wouldn't disclose now because no point. That there's so many competitors. So, so, but there's one in the back of my mind. So but what I can disclose, what I can disclose is the one I believe is, is not new, but it's a trend. I really believe more and more we're talking about lifestyle hotel. We'll be launching the last, maybe when tours are created, we are really focused since the beginning on lifestyle, brand activation. But what I believe is to push down much more on the small boutique hotel. I mean, we have to push until the end of the guest experience. And that's to be more unique, okay? To have small hotel, not more than 100 rooms, to be really tailor-made for the customer, to get a unique experience, to go beyond it. That I really believe on it, which create the label of preference. We opened three already. We just opened one in Malacca. We're building one in Bangkok. I really believe that there will be a big trend. I see already in Europe, it's happening a lot. You have so beautiful hotel in Europe on all the different capital city, and it has to happen the same in Asia. People want to get out of this chain and all this, and they want to get a unique experience, 30, 50, 100 rooms hotel, which each of them has his own brand name, his own value, his own style, his own niche market. That, for me, is a trend which is launched. So for the one I have in the back of my mind, I keep it in the back of my mind. For yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even hint about it with this group where it'll be gone already. I mean, I was listening to Alex Jovanovich earlier, and, you know, it was really the old school hotelier that was coming out. Not that he's old, but it was, you know, matching uh, what years ago came out in the book, Megatrends, High Tech, High Touch. And what you're do doing is still practicing the art of hoteling, and that's what Mark's talking about that people are going to look for the anti-hotel in the future, and that's a, a niche to work. So for mentioning that earlier, um, I know you have two questions for Rastus. I know the first one. The first one is where he gets his hair done. <laughs> but I'll let you ask the second one of Rastus in just a second. But first, um, these, these guys are out there doing it. They're rolling up their sleeves, getting their hands dirty. All of you have been involved in land assembly um, at some point in time. Any stories you have in acquiring land, uh, putting together different plots of land to get a bigger piece that uh, might give some hints to future developers in the audience or developers in the audience that might pick up a hint or two from your experience? You're uh, always going to have problems. Number one. Andrew, Andrew, what was that? You're always going to have problems, number one. Plan on it. Number two, um, string out your payments, um, stage payments. Um, number three, as soon as you've uh, when got deposits down. So are you making payments late or you plan on that? What's that? Are you making payments late or no, no. are you planning on that? Plan, plan payments, stage payments. Um, as soon as the deposit's down, put a fence around the thing and throw an excavator through it, and then sit back and wait and see what happens. Anyone else have any helpful hints on land assembly, purchasing land? I, I think if you, uh, uh, me and now from an operator side, with, with many of our owners being smaller businesses, family businesses, I can only say that you have to be very, very, very careful here. Uh, just recently, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have heard about the, the recent scandal with the Bali deputy governor stealing 10 million from one of the most prominent Indonesian businessmen on a land deal, and that businessman then himself is now 
under investigation because he forged some land certificates himself in Sorabaya. I mean, it's a never-ending story here, and you have to be very, very careful before you buy anything. You know, I'm, I'm seeing a, a lawyer back here, and I'm going to pick on you. It has to be less than 30 seconds, though. Sorry? Oh. <laughs> See what happens when you don't pay attention to what's going on uh, on stage? Okay. No. I Ingo will not get a beer tonight, okay? He's Ingo, like on the dry Ingo, list now, but ask Uli. He knows Ar a lot. Arastus, He's an ex-banker. He's an ex-banker. Do you have any uh, suggestions? See, if you're going to be in my audience, you've got to be ready to contribute on tips for people who are acquiring land. Oh, tips for people who are acquiring land. Assembling <clears throat> land. Assembling land, yeah. I mean, guess um, for foreign investors uh, particularly, uh, get your structure right from the beginning. So um, that is for develop developers using a corporate structure and not go down the nominee route, which was very classic in the past. And uh, yeah, the same applies for individual buyers. It's kind of hard to get a microphone back from a lawyer, isn't it? Um, PMAs, aren't there some changes in PMAs, guys, that we we're talking about the structure just now? Yeah, so when we first set up our PMA 2005, six years ago, um, the legal fees were 25 grand with one of the lawyers here, not you, Ingo. Um, but it ended up costing us probably, I think, 70 grand to get this thing set up with all the licenses and everything like that. Uh, and that was, I guess, because we were naive and, and you know, young, uh, green. Um, fast forward to today, um, we're setting up PMAs um, with the notaries and with the OSS system. It takes us, costs about $1,000 now, and in two weeks you, you're up, licensed and running. So it's it's an all online system. The OSS system's fantastic for getting your licensing done, um, and there's real progression, you know, under Tokoi with getting things um, online, which, which makes things transparent, which uh, is a great thing for, for the country. So really what it is is there's been a huge change in how you apply the one-step process. It's a heck of a lot cheaper and a lot, lot faster, and that's real. It's not just it's real. And us it's, reading yeah. about in the paper what the government's saying, yeah. right? And if you, I've, I've written a um, document about this, and if you, if you want, just please email me, and I'm, I'm more than happy to share it. Yeah, if anyone wants to know anything about everything, just ask Andrew. You can ask him through uh, the organizer. Um, so if anyone's interested in PMAs, uh, let us know. Alex, do you have your question for uh, Arastu? See, he has a question for everything. Now, before I release the microphone to you, Alex, it has to be a short question, okay? 30 seconds. Arastus, we had a great time working together for a short time. Then you went on to... Maybe for hotels. you, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> then you went on to hotels, and now you're looking at content. Uh, my question to you is, uh, I have a philosophy that uh, if you really love your job, if you really love the work that you do, if you really love it, then you never need to work again. Do you have a similar philosophy? I do what I love. I love what I do. Correct. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, on that note... I think we're going to end the panel a whole one minute and 47 seconds early. And we're going to turn it over, because we are the last thing between you and cocktail hour. We're going to turn it over to the organizers to summarize uh, what we did today and to give you the most valuable information, which is how to uh, find the bus that's going to take you to a wonderful beach club that's setting trends in Sonor, the ABC or Art Hotel Beach Club. So if someone can come out and rescue me and uh, give a wrap to the session, that would be great. Help me in thanking the panelists before uh, Monoff comes up. Thank you, guys. <laughs>